UNL Extension Livestock Economist Kate Brooks is our marketing analyst this week. We talked with Kate Wednesday afternoon and began by asking about the rough stretch in the cattle markets. There's a lot going on. We've had the drought going on. We're continuing to see some um, issues, you know, on international export side of things. Um, drought playing the biggest probably the biggest issue, um, and then wholesale prices in a way. We're not hitting some of those higher wholesale prices as we move forward. Plus, at the beginning of the year, we had a little bit higher supply than we had mm -hmm. originally anticipated, more due to sizes of animals. How tight is that supply right now? I mean, is it a concern that we know that the, the supply is a concern. We knew that last year because of the drought in Texas. Now it's spreading further up. Right. I mean, how big is the fear of supply? It, it's going to be continued. We didn't see it as much as we originally thought we'd mm. have seen it, and we're starting to see that tightening um, throughout the packer into the retail side as we move forward. Um, and I think we're going to continue to see that through the summer um, as we continue to, you know, not have as right. many cattle hit the market as we originally had thought. This should be the time of year we're approaching the time of year at least when the cattle producers should be starting to make better money. What does it look like if you look at the break-even numbers? Are they starting to catch up? Uh, on the packer side, yeah, we're mm. starting to see improvements. Now we're still negative, but we're seeing those improvements on the packer side. The cattle side, we're still not seeing those improvements. We're still seeing those losses. A lot of that's due. We're still seeing using the feed costs. You know, yeah. we, we're still using that old corn, the harvested corn. Some of that relief, hopefully, we'll start to see maybe, you know, we're getting into some of the planting yeah. season, starting to see what's going to happen coming forward on the feed cost side. So it's, it's what's going to happen here in the, in the future. And the USDA numbers next week on prospective plantings could rocket that either way. Who knows what, what the market will react to there. But yes. let's talk about uh, uh, the export numbers. We'll get to pork in a second, but for beef, I mean, and this might tie together here, but for beef, what are you looking at for the exports? Uh, right now, you know, we've kind of seen some some downswings on the export mm -hmm. side. We've got a lot of issues going on on the export side. Um, we do have we saw Japan open their borders up to 30 month on the beef side, um, which is a good positive. Mm -hmm. But we have some issues with the ractopamine, both for beef and pork, um, for China and. Uh, uh, Russia. Russia. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm Russian so, at heart. Yeah. <laughs> so we're seeing, you know, some issues on the, that side mm -hmm. of things. Plus, the other big issue is the value of the dollar. Um, we're starting to see higher, uh, lower yens mm -hmm. on the Japanese side, so it's making it even more costly for our, our, produ our products over on um, in international markets. Your price forecast for, for beef, what do you expect here as we go forward and start to enter, even though it's 30 degrees as we speak, start to enter grilling season. As we start to enter grilling season, hopefully we're going to start to see some of those prices go up. You know, we've been skating on that $2. We haven't hit that $2 box wholesale box beef prices. Um, we didn't hit them last year. There was hopes that we'd hit those. Um, the hope is, again, this year maybe we'll hit those, and as we start grilling, maybe we'll start seeing more push of that beef through and, and pork uh, through those retail markets. You look at the pork markets and uh, it's really not much better. We saw that all-time high last year, and uh, the export market was strong. Now, not so much. What's all playing into pork and the struggles it's had over the last month or so? Again, you know, some of that's the export side of things, mm. you know, dealing with the exports, trying to get product pushed through the market. Um, on the retail side here in the U.S., you know, we're still not seeing it pushed through. Some of that's because we're seeing higher prices on the retail side. Um, some of that also, you know, the weather's playing a big factor. We're not getting out there going and grilling, so we're not trying to see, not seeing some of those uptrends in the markets. What do you look at uh, expansion numbers? Is that a possibility? If producers see that they have a gap here, if corn prices do take a hit, is there a possibility that uh, the hog producer may expand? I do. I do think we'll, we might start to see some of those expansions on the pork side. Um, cattle, you know, it's going to take a little bit mm. longer f to get ramped up. But on the pork side, I think we're seeing maybe, even if they're losing right now, if feed costs will go down, that we could start to see increases on the pork side. What about the consumer? What about the consumer who's buying meat for grilling, both in beef and pork? What do those prices look like? Going to see record high in beef for sure, yeah. high, in increasing prices on pork, even into the chicken side of things. We're just going to see higher prices. Mm -hmm.